The minis I'm about to show you are probably the most controversial 3D printable miniatures of 2020. So, yeah. they are. Uh, sorry, wrong minis, <laughs> here we go. It's actually these. These are just off the printer, printed on the Piapoli Phenom that I've got back there. Washed, cured, supports removed. And as you can see, this color resin, it's Soraya Smoky Black, is a little bit hard to see the detail on. So we're gonna give them a quick prime. And while they dry, we're gonna bring them back so that we can check them out a little bit later. So while those dry, what's so special about these minis anyways? In case you couldn't quite tell, they're all wheelchair users and they're definitely meant to be played as characters. These minis and what they represent are the subject of some very, very passionate debate in the Dungeons and Dragons community. And in all my years of 3D printing and d and I don't think I've ever seen like a mini or a concept for a character ignite so much controversy and debate as this one is the combat wheelchair. And that's what this video is all about today. First of all, hi, I'm Danny, the 3D Printing DM. Welcome to 3D Printed Tabletop, a channel where we cover all things 3D printing for your tabletop games. These minis are relatively new. As of filming this video, they only came out a few weeks ago on August 15th. They were inspired by a D&D 5e item called the combat wheelchair. They were sculpted by Rush Charles and Tom Lishman of Steamforged Games. They were put out by Strata Miniatures and the combat wheelchair itself was made by Sarah, whose Twitter is at Mustangs Art. And this video isn't sponsored by them or anything like that. So just want to be clear, just in case. So what? why are these wheelchair user minis so controversial? And what does this have to do with 3D printing? We'll get to the second part in a little bit, but first, the controversy. Move over, dumb Danny. It's time for Critical Call. Well, if you look at the Tiefling's Cleric's glasses, they're actually missing any kind of stabilizer for the nose, making them impossible and unrealistically unstable. Carl, I, the Druid's handbag, too cute for medieval fashion, especially the kind that a wild Druid would have access to. Have you ever ridden? a wheelchair laden with this amount of rope. The chances of this rope catching on the wheels is just too high to be taken seriously if that rogue was actually adventuring. No, Car if Carl. If you look at the position of the torch, if any of that flame were to flip down, <laughs> due to the forward motion of the wheelchair, it could potentially spread to the dwarf's hair, leading to one more bald dwarf, which we all know D&D and fantasy has enough of already. Unrealistic. Carl, none of those things are the reason why these minis are controversial. What? Or the combat wheelchair either. Oh, you can, uh, you can continue, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. These minis and more importantly, the idea of the combat wheelchair in D&D, it's controversial because some people believe that having a wheelchair as a character, as a hero who is doing normal adventuring stuff, that concept itself is game breaking and it's breaking their immersion, if you will. And out of all of these debates that have been happening along the internet has come some really funny things like the combat wheelchair bingo. <laughs> I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> but look, this video is not meant to on folks who think that this isn't right for their games. I think that was the first adult word I said on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you're one of those people who feels that the combat wheelchair or these minis isn't right for you, isn't right for your game, you don't wanna allow it to be included, then don't include it. It's optional, it's not required, it's not mandatory, it's not published. And even if it was published, it would be like those rules in the Dungeon Master's Guide that are optional, just additional variants that you can or can't use. But there's a lot of stuff that's made in the D&D community that's really inspiring to me. That doesn't make me make a video. And I will tell you why I decided I wanted to make a video 
and how this relates to 3D printing and my games and maybe your games. There is so much variety in the 3D printing community and specifically in the 3D printing miniature space. In fact, the idea that another artist, another person made miniatures of some kind that goes against your suspension of belief enough to the point where you might feel you have to comment that is a pretty frequent occurrence. I see a lot of minis and a lot of discussions and I moderate a lot of them, so. And let me give you some specific examples so you can see what I'm talking about. Some miniatures have muscles that have their own muscles. That would never happen in real life. Very revealing miniatures. No woman would ever wear that stuff. How about overly clothed miniatures? Those miniatures look like men. Realistic proportions. Ah, uh, those minis will never print. Cartoony proportions. Uh, how would they ever fit with my miniatures? Old school style. Ugh, five E orcs don't look like that. Wow style. Ugh, everything looks like wow these days. Ugh. And the list can go on. <laughs> and you know what I've never seen until two weeks ago? Wheelchair minis. If you want to make a Dungeons and Dragons character, really any RPG character who's a wheelchair user, you'd have no choices at all. You wouldn't even get to complain about how your mini was styled or anything because there just wasn't any. Not even on Hero Forge, which is the largest customizable mini maker right now in the game. At least as a film in this video, that may change. <laughs> well, having a wheelchair mini might not be something with as much personal meaning to you. I can tell you that it would mean the world to some people. Otherwise, there wouldn't be quite as much positivity and support, I think, for this concept and this idea. But Danny, I don't know anybody who would want to use these minis. Not my fault. And that's okay. I'm not saying everybody needs to buy these minis and print them and take them to every single convention and pick up game and force everybody to, to play one of these minis or force a player to always play with these minis. That's not what I'm saying. But I will say this. Sometimes just including diverse characters and diverse choices does a little bit more for player creativity than reading off race descriptions or giving them the player's handbook in terms of deciding what they wanna play and who they wanna play and what kind of characters they can make. Example. A good family friend's teenage kids asked me to run some D&D for them recently. Only one of them had read any of the handbooks and having been a middle school teacher for two years, I knew that probably wasn't gonna change at least for a couple of sessions. So instead of doing the normal lengthy character creation process, I printed out a whole bunch of minis, all different kinds of ages, races, sexes, classes, and weapon choices for the modular ones. And I let them pick a mini that they thought was cool or interesting. I also let them put whatever accessories they wanted as long as they figured out a way to fit it on the mini. But it was really cool to see what they organically chose. There was no edgelord rogues and we had only one human fighter out of eight teens. If I had wheelchair users in the mini lineup, even if they hadn't chosen it, they would know that it was acceptable. They would know that it could happen, that somebody could play a wheelchair user in game and they'd be able to do at least the same stuff or the basic stuff that every other character could do. And while there might be some minor differences, they'd be able to hero just like everybody else. As an example, Nobody even questioned that there'd be a 60 or 70 year old doing all type of athletic, adventuring stuff with parties of younger people. Just wasn't something that anybody batted an eyelash. Maybe because we have Gandalf, maybe because we've seen this sort of thing before. And if there was wheelchair minis here in enough games, maybe it will be the same thing with those. If I did have a wheelchair user in my game and they really wanted to play a wheelchair user mini, then I would want them to feel that. I would want them to feel included in the group and feel like they would be capable of doing all the same stuff that all of my other players would in the same way that that girl did when she picked to play the old wizard. That's what I think that mini would mean to them. And here we are, our primed miniatures. Up until a few weeks ago, none of this was an option. Thanks to this tech and a bunch of amazing creators, it is now. And it's more than just Strata Games now too. Check out these other wheelchair minis too. Because of all of them, I get to make my next game one of the most controversial games of 2020 or 2021, depending on when uh, I start my next live campaign. If you're interested in joining me and having your own controversial minis, I have links to all the things that I've talked about in this video in the description below. 
And if you appreciate the content that I make here on 3D Printed Tabletop, you can support us by picking up a late pledge, also in the description below, or on Patreon. Thank you for watching, happy printing, and happy gaming. Also, the star sun symbol looks surprisingly similar to the Kingdom of Corona symbol in Disney's Tangled. Is this inspiration or intellectual property theft, you tell me? Why does this druid appear to be wearing a metal breastplate? Everyone knows that druids are forbidden from wearing metal due to the existing taboo first appearing in Eldritch Wizardry 1976. And those knives? <laughs> Those are like micro knives, dude. Good luck killing anything with that measly 1d4 damage. Yeah, right, not believable.